I think that's the first time I've seen that. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV down here at Forest River to get you my first full look at a new floor plan here. The 375 Gotcha Fam from Hair Glen Hemisphere, basically. Um, Heritage Glen and Hemisphere, Salem Wildwood are the same thing. Just to make life easier, and because I think it's funny, I'm going to refer to these from henceforth as Harry Glens. <laughs> Which is maybe not the prettiest sounding name, but I think you get the idea. Anyway, what are we looking at here? So, um, Harry Glenn was one of the first fifth wheel brands that I ever bumped into that I saw a full true two bathroom. Not like a bath and a half, but like two showers, two toilets. You know, uh, something that more people could use at one time. And that was in their 356 QB model. And that's a cool model. And it has a rear wall entry door bathroom just like this. But um, it's definitely a more true bunkhouse. This by comparison is a little bit of what people often refer to as a dual suite. It's a true two bedroom, two bathroom efficiency apartment on wheels that also happens to have a bonus loft above the rear uh, bedroom that some people like to call third bedroom, some people call loft bunk, some people call attic storage. I think you can call it whatever you please because that's the thing with this RV. This is a rig that works in, uh, where, in an atypical way, where traditional fifth wheels have failed people, this one steps in to fill in the blanks. Because there's a lot of people who need the extra private sleeping space, who don't want and don't need or can't use a bunkhouse. Like people who need a literal mother-in-law, father-in-law suite. People who maybe have an adult child with special needs that ha needs their own private and decompression space. This is a really cool floor plan that can work in ways that other floor plans just don't. And I mean, if we're calling a spade a spade, a duck a duck, if you really look at this floor plan, it's, uh, well, I'm just going to say it's kind of perfect for the flamingo friends and the pineapple pals. <laughs> and if you don't know what that means, um, you might want to put your browser in incognito mode before you Google it at work. <laughs> don't say I didn't warn you. I, and I think the best way I can describe this, like, kitchen and living room in this one, uh, because, you know, if you've seen a couple dual suite or two bedroom fifth wheels, it kind of feels like you've sort of seen them all. Because um, there's really, there's only so much room uh, available during RV production. Like, they can't just make these things 60 foot long and come up with all kinds of crazy original stuff. It would be neat, but you, you wouldn't be able to tow it. You probably, you know, affording it would also be a bit of a trick, uh, trick at that point. I don't know why I decided to pronounce uh, trick starting with a CH. But by the way, if you want to really mess with your own brain, start pronouncing the word dragon with a J. Dragon. Dragon. Like, man, it messes my brain up. My nephew told me that one time. He's like, no, dragon starts with a J. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. That would be dragon. Wait a minute. Anyway, it, sorry. I get on these tangents, like, really hard. And, and I don't even realize it until two minutes later. Back into the kitchen. Obviously, we do have that little uh, toe kick uh, right there. I'm kind of curious. Is that a major deal breaker for you? People who have owned RVs for a long time, would that be an issue for you? Um, leave me a little note, let me know. That is a 16 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor fridge, by the way. And they use, um, uh, it feels far more sturdy and stable and long lasting, a metallic uh, ladder to get to that upper bed. Now you might notice a couple of my little shoe prints climbing up the ladder. I did take my shoes off before I climbed up there. I will get you a nice detailed look at the loft in a few minutes. But uh, you know, I don't like, uh, as a policy, I don't like to grind my feet into potentially someone else's furniture. So that is what I'm going to call kind of the main cabin primary entry door here. And let's start zeroing in on a couple of the differentiating factors. Now, maybe not necessarily a thousand percent unique, but you can see how they're using those square windows. One of the things that I think some folks like about those is it gets the uh, the valances and lambrequins, all the window treatments out of the way because your blackout privacy shades are built right in. But here's one of the other really cool things about what Harry Glenn is doing. All of these windows open for airflow and they do all have bug screens. You see how the window on the right is a little darker? That's because the, the way the bug screen is reading on the camera right there. So you can actually have airflow without the bugs getting into the RV, which is not something everyone is doing. Now, at the time of this filming, they are still using the carpetless boat flooring, the marine uh, like pontoon decking flooring in their slide floors. That is going to change though. That is going to change to be a linoleum or whatever you want to call it. 
but it will match the main floor. So that hasn't happened yet. I don't have a hard changeover date on when that's going to be happening. I just have it on authority from the factory. It will be happening. And this is what I meant by like they, they flipped around the kitchen and the living room. Most builders of this layout, your primary entry door is up front here. This one, it's obviously toward the aft, A-F-T. Uh, I got to make sure that I say that so HR doesn't have a heart attack. <laughs> it's toward the back of the trailer. Um, and as a result, that puts your entertainment up here, which... I, I was kind of wrapping my head around it. I was asking, are they doing it to be different or is there a functional benefit here? And as I thought about it, I realized that it's probably going to allow for better refrigerator access when the slides are closed in road mode, which I have not checked yet. The other thing I thought about is that if people are coming and going, getting in and out of the refrigerator all day from that aft entry door, well, then they're not walking back and forth across the entertainment. So the entertainment, although it does kind of just feel shoved up there in the corner, actually very effective and that tv can pivot around a little bit by the way although with the way it's angled i don't know that you need to the only little note that i have over here is it just feels a little plain up top but i also think that that might be a really nice opportunity for an owner to kind of decorate and personalize now uh as we back up and we get over into the kitchen proper it has i i think respectable counter space um, there's a lot of like readily accessible horizontal uh, counter space here. Now, I haven't looked for, we got some power outlets right there. Um, I'm guessing we have power outlets under the over. Oh no, even better. We have power outlets right beside the refrigerator, right at countertop level where it makes sense. And although it's not like a symmetrical kitchen, I'm not mad at it because it's, it's a big chunk of a kitchen slide. So you have symmetrical stove and drawers. So you have room to set you know, um, pots and pans and things beside the stove if you're doing prep work or coffee makers and appliances and still have some counter space left over with some good storage above. And you're going to see, we haven't even gotten into the pantry yet. This thing has a redonkulous walk-in pantry kind of beside behind the entertainment center. I'm going to call it a, uh, like a pantry-tainment uh, center or something like that. Um, <laughs> it's a word that I use with uh, regularity, obviously. Now, once again, this is a loft model. And whether you're going to call it a third, a triple bedroom, a loft attic, a bunk, um, whatever you want to call it, you know, it has it. So you can, and that's the thing, you can use this floor plan in different ways. One of the things that I really do like here is from ground level, you can turn the lights on and off uh, for the, the upstairs. So like if you are using this as a loft sleeper, you can be like, all right, kids, lights out, night, night, you know? And look, it's basically just a, a bunk mattress on the floor, but that's two or three times thicker than what I usually find out there in the industry. And this, I thought, was was interesting, probably because it's a fire escape window. It does open for airflow. It does not have a bug screen like the rest of them. Again, probably, for, I don't know if it's a fire code safety thing, but it, they actually included a day shade on that uh, to uh, you know be able to, I guess, help keep the bugs out or something. I'm not sure. Now, giving you um, a little bit more of a, uh, a look up here, kind of helping size everything up with my adult size body after I kicked off my shoes. It's cold, but I still kick my shoes off because I don't believe in grinding my feet into what might be your furniture. I will say with the vaulted ceiling up there, and this is over a drop frame in the back of the RV, it was more spacious really than I expected. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I could sit up there and do some RV yoga, but I don't know that that's necessarily the purpose of a loft attic space. I think that it performed its job. I think it did it very well. And I will say also getting up and down that ladder was one of the better ladder experiences that I've had getting up and down lofts. I will also say I did go up and down that ladder with my shoes on. A lot of those ladders are not barefoot friendly. So I don't know how that translates to this one. That might be a little thing you want to mark down on your little notepad um, when you're uh, going out RV shopping, you know. Now, obviously, as we go through the kitchen, there's a shocking amount of storage in here. More than I think is, is readily obvious and, and that you would realize. The, uh, you know, that, that pantry, again, you can literally walk in there. And I don't notice if you caught it in the pantry. There is a set of power outlets inside that pantry. So if you want to use that for like um, a little, some people just leave certain appliances in there or they'll put like a, uh, a portable shark vacuum, like stick vac or something like that in there where it can charge up uh, or like a boot dryer. Uh, the, my point is when you have a power outlet in a big pantry like that, 
it's actually, it can be super, super helpful. And if you don't care about it, you just don't have to use it. There's no real downside to it uh, whatsoever. Now you may notice, uh, again, when you have those blackout sheets pulled, you really, really privatize this sucker. And I'm gonna see if I can find the switch on the way back past that uh, command panel, because there's actually white LED indirect accent lighting above these slide outs that I do not have ignited like a lightsaber currently. Uh, but by, by the way, sometimes people ask, um, you know, in, in star Wars, why the, why, why the Jedi didn't just turn their lightsabers off and then like slice somebody in half and like by turning it back on again. Uh, apparently that's considered the, um, forbidden form, but you know what I thought about? There is nothing that says you couldn't use the force to turn off your opponent's lightsaber and then just hack him to pieces. <laughs> Good news, too, with a lightsaber, you don't got to worry about them bleeding all over because it'll automatically cauterize wounds. That is some forward thinking right there. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a nerd. Sorry. Moving on. Uh, working our way back here, you might notice how we actually have a level change. This is a rear drop frame, as I mentioned, so there is actually a little Texas two-step on the way down right there. But um, the, uh, the, the point of that is to give you good walkable adult sized headroom in the second bedroom because again it's not a bunkhouse it's a second full-on true queen bedroom you have a true queen bed down here you have what's called an olympic queen bed upstairs if you're not familiar with that we'll we'll discuss that in more detail when we get uh, up there the other thing that i noticed on this one and i'm going to get this all open for you very very soon they i think provided some of the best storage in the second bedroom that i think i've seen from any of these dual suite models and now that we're up here a little bit closer what do you think about the way that they have the lights all trimmed out now i think it looks good i i think it just provides it feels like it's done with a little bit of intent and in case you're curious yes there are heat ducts and there is a, a forced air duct into the, the the rear bedroom and bathroom so you're not just smoking yourself to death in here and and you know sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons, uh, as it were. Now, getting that bed up, you can see how there is storage below that. We'll see that repeated in the primary bedroom. And again, the the, the total like personal storage and uh, like closet and dresser space we have in the second bedroom is, I think, some of the best I've seen in any dual suite model. I think they did it very, very nicely, uh, personally. But that's, you know, just my opinion man <laughs> as it were now just in case you're curious let me actually like if you were sort of sitting up or laying on the bed this might be kind of your perspective right here this is overlooking the campsite of the rv you might notice in the bottom left how there are a whole bunch of like there's household and usb plugs as well as some coax there so if you did want to bring a, uh, a TV that maybe was on a pedestal stand that you stood in front of that window when you got to your destination, and then you like took it down and stored it in transit. That is something you, you could do here. Um, it's also not easily seen because of the, uh, the angles that I'm working with here, but there are some household outlets on both sides uh, of the bed. Now, this is not really CPAP you know, uh, side stand friendly or anything like that. That's what, actually one of the ironies of a bed slide fifth wheel. They're actually the worst for bedside stands. A north south non sliding bed is uh, far more effective in that regard. Now, you do have a deadbolt on this rear door so that if you are sitting on the toilet, you don't got to worry about, you know, hey, am I pooping alone or am I going to poop with friends today? That's not going to be an issue. And speaking of that, you have a horizontal fart fan. Uh, because we have a loft above us, it doesn't go all the way up to the roof. They had to put a sidewall fan on there, which is actually something I'm starting to see happen more. Like, I've seen those in some truck campers, but I've also started seeing them in a lot of these big loft-style things to make sure you get airflow where uh, you really need it. Uh, you know what I mean? Now, looking down in here, the space around that toilet was pretty good, although the uh, the butt napkin roller was slightly in the way. You've also got that um, a, a nice spot for wastebasket right here in the bathroom, which I like. And you've got a, a Sir Mix-a-Lot double-up uh, Lipitorge storage cabinet up here, which I wasn't too mad at. I didn't think that was terrible at all. Something I was really worried about, though. I've seen several of these dual suite models, and even some of them with a rear drop frame, because you have a loft above, I often really struggle with headroom in these. But if you notice right here, overall, that wasn't terrible. Like, uh, if I if I wasn't wearing shoes and a hat, if I was flat-footed, I would actually probably just fit in there. But, I mean, what more do you need? 
you know, I, I would fit. I'm a, I'm a little over six foot myself. And if you think about it, I think a lot of these dual suite models are probably being used for smaller people. Um, maybe not, you know, maybe some full grown adult size things. Again, this is an RV that I could see almost working like an RV Airbnb, uh, an Air BRV. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll try to figure that out my own time later, but you get the idea. Um, it, it might, it might work in that regard. Now we've kind of crushed the living room and everything, uh, already. Oh, I, that's right. I, I wanted you to see, I, I did find that little switch. I do have the indirect lights on now above the slide and it's actually, it really does a nice job of just kind of lightening, brightening, and filling the space uh, in this thing. Um, moving forward up here, the upper deck is going to look far more traditional and familiar. Um, and again, there's things I like about this RV. There's things I maybe necessarily don't. If you're going to use the upstairs bathroom, you really got to venture all the way up here because of the way that that door swings. And I think what I would do is I'd put one of those little rubber stopper pads right there to keep that, that, that handle from smashing into stuff. But here's the, I don't know that this necessarily bothers me because I think most of the time, if you're going to be using this bathroom, you're probably coming from the bedroom in which case that opens in very organic fashion and you don't have to go backwards down the stairs. Now, that may not work, that may not be the case every single time, but I don't know that it's as bad as it maybe necessarily seems at first glance. I like those wicker baskets. It just, it makes that open space do something, which I, I think is uh, awful nice here. And again, it is, uh, it, this is going to be a little more basic, but it, it's a medicine cabinet, it gets the job done. And this is a variety of Max Air fan. It's not their big, like, you know, 12 inch fan or whatever. But what's kind of cool about that is it actually does have a rain cover built right into it from the factory and it looks like we have ourselves a rhino beetle um uh, towel holding system going on over here and i've noticed how a lot of manufacturers are starting to just sort of trim up and panel and dress up that wall behind the toilet it just makes it look better i'm i, I ain't mad at it i'm certainly glad they're doing something with it you know space around this toilet was good and i want to give harry glenn some credit they've been building some bathrooms where the toilet paper holder in relation to the toilet was impossible to reach unless you had go-go gadget arms. And that doesn't seem to be the case here. And along with the rhino beetle, uh, you know, towel holders, we have the elephant enema linen storage. But again, I love the fact that they, they like, they dressed it up. They put doors on it. They didn't leave it open face. They are really, for me, checking some major, major boxes here. I, I'm pretty happy with what they're doing. I'm also pretty happy with the total headroom space inside that shower. And I, you might notice my face get a little bit surprised. The little corner seat was down here further than I was kind of expecting. But I think, you know, I don't know if it's going to be so much as, as a seat as like if you want to sort of prop your leg up if you're going to shave your shins like my uncle gary or something like that hey, i don't know now it's not a sliding privacy door it is a swing door um i kind of wish like um like montanas are very good sometimes cougars will put those magnet holdbacks there rockwood's good about that to kind of hold it open but at the same time i i think a lot of people are probably just going to leave this door closed i don't know maybe not at my house I always thought we'd leave our bedroom door closed all the time, but we don't seem to. Oh, second air conditioner that uh, that you're looking at there, that is optional. I could not imagine building an RV this size without it, however. But they are still 15,000 BTUs. So this has a 30,000 BTU cooling system, which is kind of, well, cool. And you've got that power Versatilt bed system, which opens up the floor space in here and makes things like getting to those little dresser totes, kind of like we saw up in the loft, very, very easy. Now that vaulted ceiling that we saw in the shower, you'll have the same headroom up here throughout the entirety of the bedroom, which I think is actually uh, pretty darn nice. And you have the same uh, airflow uh, windows with the blackout shades and bug screens going on over there. Now, if I look straight to the left over here and you look down, once again, you see some uh, household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. And overall, I think that that's decent walk around bed space. It's not amazing, but it's enough. And um, this is again, what's called an Olympic queen bed. So a true queen is 60 by 80. An Olympic queen, although less common in the residential world is a real type of bed measurement. It's 66 inches wide instead of 60. So it's not a king, but 
it is something that you can actually get a replacement mattress and sheets for and give you a little bit of extra room. Now, cracking that closet open and dropping down the Versatilt bed that you see right here, um, you, you know, the, to, the, it eats up a little bit of the floor space, but I guess, you know, that's kind of its job. I also want to mention that um, you to, to lift the bed to get to the storage under the bed like you saw me do right there, you absolutely have to have the Versatilt bed down. Otherwise, you're going to start stressing something, and you might get away with it a time or two, but eventually something's going to break. And you may have noticed how they do have um, uh, washer-dryer capability up in the front closet of this one. So if you are looking for something as an alternative to residential housing, this does check all those boxes. Although, understand, uh, despite all the, the, the talk about full timing and whatnot, that's really not how RVs are built. But I'm a realist. I know that some people have been priced out of the residential housing market. And, uh, you know, this is, this is what they got to do. Now, for a slide closed road mode access and function, I wasn't expecting much. When you have opposing slides, nylon, multi slides, dual suites like this, stuff gets pinched. I will say, though, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. I'm going to categorize this RV as travel stop friendly. Maybe not travel stayover friendly because we, we can't, you know, like get to and like use most of the bedding, some of the bedding in transit, but the refrigerator you can get to. And if you remember, since you have that, um, you know, rear wall entry door straight into a full rear wall bathroom, you do always have at least one bathroom available to you. And since that door opens off the back of the RV, you don't have to open a slide sideways to get to it. I think that qualifies. So we can nap, uh, well, we can't nap, but we can crap and snack uh, in transit and, you know, open everything with our uh, control pad that's right here, which I guess is all you need to do. Um, by, by the way, let me spin you around like a record, baby. Over here on the uh, the island, you might have noticed a handful of the random decorations. Um, the uh, the team here at Harry Glenn was kind enough to, to lightly decorate the RV just to help you, you know, understand what it might look like once you moved in. As a courtesy of them for pulling these up, I pulled all these out. One of the uh, the things I noticed here was something I spotted on this candle. It's gourmand and fig. Enjoy a moment of peace. But if, if you look at this really closely, it says that it's soy wax, which as we know, uh, in Spanish translates to I am wax. Another cool update they did on the, the 24 generation of all their fifth wheels is they're now outfitted with the, uh, the what was previously aftermarket RV airflow system. Um, if you're really curious about that, uh, Google RV airflow system and then like a lot of people really swear by this thing. It's something I've seen a lot of people doing aftermarket on their RVs. And effectively what it does is it eliminates a ton of turbulence up in your air system and it gets air down into the cabin of your RV more quickly and effectively and efficiently and basically makes the RV cool better without needing to like build it with a bigger air conditioning system. That is something I think is very, very cool. And I love the fact that they were in tune with what people are doing to their RVs after they bought them and said, what if we just did that right from the factory? So now it's covered by the factory warranty. One of the tricks with a big sucker like this though is that it is a physically large RV and you need a, a very capable vehicle of being able to handle one of these. Now, I, I will also tell you, um, this has a rear drop frame, and what we're going to see is uh, that really limits your outside uh, ground clearance. So as a result, this is the kind of uh, big giant fifth wheel I think is best going to be used and left at a destination as much as possible. I, I don't know that I really recommend this thing for like uh, ideal towing circumstances uh, if you, you can't really predict the kind of terrain you're going to run into. Because if you look at the back end of this thing, you see how you can actually notice uh, the I-beam chassis? That's because it actually drops down. Like the uh, this, this whole chassis is a Z in shape. If you really look at it, in a, in a sense, it's like a reverse Z. And that means that like, you know, if you look at how much of the tail this thing is behind the tires, uh, if you go over a bump or a severe incline, you may run the risk of kind of dragging the tail end of this thing the way a, a dog might scratch its butt on the carpet. Notice how they only do that when you get new carpet, however, I swear they have a vendetta against us. What I'm getting at is uh, it's not that you can't tow it, it's just that you really need to plan your route and you need a good sized vehicle to handle it. Um, this does have a little more cargo capacity versus some of the builders that I've seen make a layout like this. And when you're going to have a lot of people in it, that is kind of important. Um, now, someone has asked me, you know, cargo capacity, 
does that apply even when the RV is at rest or is that really only intended for when the RV is in motion? And the, the stated cargo capacity that like you see in my specs chart, that is without a doubt uh, intended to be when the RV is in motion. The trick is, um, can, you know, could you put more cargo in it when it's at rest without damaging it? Yes. How much? I don't know because nobody tests for that. Nobody actually has a barometer for that. So just, I don't know, use common sense and don't load cinder blocks into the thing. Now, when the video first began, I mentioned how there's something I, I'm not sure I've ever seen. I don't know if I've ever seen a towable RV like this with a suicide door. A lot of people will ask me, why do the doors always open from uh you know from the left side to the right side and this one opens from the right side to the left side it opens backwards i don't know if this is the actual answer but i think it's because if the door happened to pop open in transit um if the door opens this way it's absolutely going to fling wide open and smash against the side of the rv um if the door opens the other direction that's not as likely now the reason that they did it here is because with the stable steps the door has to be almost fully open the way that you see it right now to be able to open and close that big giant quad stable step if the uh stable steps or, or, or if uh, the door opened the other way it wouldn't be able to do that because it would conflict with the slide so that's just kind of one of those interesting little factoids and yet again it's something that i think leads me to feel this rv is best used at a destination and not on the way to one now they're using um uh square windows which is funny because rvs used to have square windows and then they went away from them and now it's like it's this cool trendy thing that's coming back but you may notice how all of their windows open for airflow. And again, you've got the nice blackout shades built right in and the bug screens built right in. And you may have noticed, again, we have dual power awnings here. But what's really weird, like it's visually jarring to me on this floor plan, is how we don't have an awning all the way up front here. And I, it looks weird. I get it. But at the same time, I do, I do have the dual patio awning coverage back here, so I don't think it's insufficient. I just think it's irregular, and that's kind of jarring. Um, <clears throat> this is a six-point auto leveling system, by the way, as big as this sucker is, it really needs the six-point. These are running on Goodyear Endurance Radials, by the way. And if I uh, took a knee and got down, you would see that the underbelly of this, it is enclosed. They do force air heat, the belly of these have a radiant barrier and holding tank heater standard on every Harry Glenn model, whether it's fifth wheels or travel trailers. I do like the consistency there, um, especially considering how tall this is. I do appreciate that it has a uh, an always on built in ladder, not a telescopic uh, removable. Um, I know that the telescopic ladders are rated to carry more weight, but it, when when you're crossing that large of a span, they feel a little wobbly, a little spooky to me, you know, and there's just something about these being built right on when you're that high up. I just, I personally, I just feel a little more secure. Now, everyone has their own opinions. Everyone, you know, can go about things a little bit differently. That's just my two cents and my input. Now, you might notice how the primary entry door did have that full viewing window in it, whereas the bathroom door back here does not. That doesn't bother me since that's a very private space. I think you're going to have that privatized most of the time. Um, again, all of our windows that you see, uh, I think basically all the windows except for the window in the entry door uh, in the main cabin, open for airflow. One of the, uh, I already mentioned the drop frame, and I hope you appreciate, by the way, that I almost began the outside section of this video with cautionary tales to help you, uh, you know, be in your best, most educated purchase decision area type thing possible. One other thing, though, this RV is and really has to be a dual-headed sewer monster. Obviously doing a David Blaine teleport from back to front. This is what we're looking at here. And just so you can complete the visual, give you a little bit of a look at the belly. Now, if you check their website, it says uh, sectionalized uh, like underbelly panels, basically. that's They're using a little bit different belly skin. What's cool about it is, God forbid, you do need any kind of service work. You can drop individual panel sections instead of the entire belly, which I'm telling you will save an ungodly amount of labor time. It can be very laborious. Uh, getting into and checking anything in the underbelly. Uh, un uh, Pass-through compartment right here. It does have a docking station. I'm not going to call it like a privatized docking station, though. A lot of brands have started doing this where they just sort of have it open sideways uh, into a, uh, a pass-through compartment. And I think the goal is to make the belly basement storage look a little bit bigger. And I guess in that effect, it would be successful. 
My concern is that if you do have uh, a funky thing happening with a water fitting and you do have any kind of water spritzing and spraying anywhere, personally, I kind of like it when that thing is fully enclosed so that you don't have to necessarily worry about getting water all over in your, your front basement compartment sort of thing, you know, but uh, maybe that's more of a theoretical problem than a practical one. I'm not entirely sure. Um, overall, I'm not unhappy with it, you know. It's got a couple of hitches and it's giddy up, but I think that that's just symptomatic to the type of floor plan that we have here and not necessarily indicative of any sort of like major shortfalls that Harry Glenn's designers uh, put in place. And once again, Hemisphere and Heritage Glen. They're the exact same thing. You'll find a 375 fam under both of them. Um, so whether you call them, you know, Hemma Glens, Harris Feeders, or Harry Glens, whatever works for you, we have them at Bishop's RV in multiple different locations. And this is a brand that personally I think is on the upswing, and I think you're going to find it uh, at more and more of our locations over time. Now, the thing is, they're not the only ones to make a dual suite like this. Like this kind of layout really sort of originated in the Alpine Avalanche family, but it's now found in like Solitude, Montana, uh, Harry Glen, obviously Alpine Avalanche Paradigm. And I have videos on quite a few of these, not all of them now. So I'm going to leave you some links in the description. One, to check pricing and availability on these things right here, but also to see videos on the other ones that I put together. And I'd love it if you checked out one or two of those and let me know which one would you go with and why. And short of that, thanks again for tuning in. Me and Harry thank you greatly. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.